Jesus knows how to help. Well, this man, same situation. He's crying out to Jesus. Listen, Jesus knows how to help. He knows how to help us. And here he says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still. Uh, this is so beautiful. This gets his attention now. Uh, don't think that just because the disciples are indifferent that Jesus himself is indifferent. Jesus stood still and he commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying to him, be of good cheer. Now they're friendly to him. Cheer up. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. <laughs> now we're not going to help you. you know, but, yeah. Oh, well now Jesus said, you know. Okay, so he casting away his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? You know, I said, what do you want that I should, what do you want me to do? You know why? Because Jesus is a distributor of God's grace. You know why he says, what do you want from me? Because it's all free and it's all right here. He didn't say, I know what I'm going to do for you. Uh, he said, you tell me what it is that you need. The blind man said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, it's almost unbelievable. Listen to what he said. Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Have we ever heard those words before? Did you know that's identically what he said to the woman with the issue of blood who touched his garment? And he said the same thing to this blind man. Now we know, of course, it's Jesus anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. But why does he say it's your faith that made you whole? It's because that is the key factor. Faith gives substance to the things we hope for. And Jesus identifies that and he said, be, cheer up here, go your way, your faith has made you whole, and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. The reality, the substance, faith gave substance in this man's life to the thing that he hoped for. Uh, let's see, how about one more? I don't want to just wear you out reading, there's lots of these. How about Luke's Gospel, chapter 17? I made a little note of some of these. that. Uh, you know, this is not an isolated uh, situation. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. Verse uh, 12, let's start there. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 12. He, as, and as he, Jesus, entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. Now listen, leprosy is a pretty serious disease, and they were segregated from everybody else because it was contagious. So this is a pretty serious matter, and these, which were, they stood afar off. They were supposed to stand afar. They're not supposed to get close to people. So standing afar off, these lepers, verse 13, they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. That's very much like what blind Bartimaeus said. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priest. Now, it's an interesting thing why he said to them, Go show yourself to the priest. You could read it, and some people do, that he's just testing them, just giving them some task to do. Kind of like those medieval stories, you know, with the knights. They've got some kind of an errand or a task. That's not it at all. Uh, Phil, could you just for a second give us... Go back to the Old Testament, Phil. Give us uh, Leviticus chapter 14, uh, verse 2. Let me make sure that's right. I can't read my own writing yet. Yeah, Leviticus chapter 14, verse 2. Just for a second. Phil will get this for you. Don't turn it. In the Old Testament, in the law, it says this. This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. Now... Moses had this written, God gave Moses the law, and he wrote this into the law, for a leper, and in the day that he's cleansed, whenever he's clean, if he's clean from his leprosy, here's what he's supposed to do, go show himself to the priest, and that will confirm it. Now, do you suppose that, that might have been in Jesus' mind when he said to those ten lepers, they said, Jesus, have mercy on us. And he just turned and said, all right, go show yourself to the priest. You know what he's saying? All right, I know what you want. As far as I'm concerned, you've got it. Go show yourself to the priest. Right? Okay, Phil, go back to Luke's Gospel chapter. I just want you to see why he said that. Verse 14. Luke 17, 14. Notice that Jesus, when the lepers said, have mercy on us, Jesus didn't say, well, y'all just wait right here. I'm going to go away and pray about this. Make sure that's what God wants to do. You know, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what God wants? He knew what God wanted to do. Why? Because he's anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Jesus represents the grace of God. He's got everything that's needed. And these men are calling out to him. So Jesus, in a sense, said, All right, if you believe I've got it, turn around and go show yourselves to the priest. Now, did you know, let me tell you something. When he said that to them, and they turned around to go show themselves to the priest, they weren't any better. They didn't feel anything. They didn't see anything. There was no evidence of anything changing in their life. You know how I know? 
Look at what it says. He said, go show yourselves to the priest. And it came to pass that, listen, as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. That means they weren't cleansed first. Then they said, yahoo, let's go show ourselves to the priest. No, Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest. No change. But as they went and began to, listen to this carefully, they began to act like it was true. <laughs> they knew, you know, they could have said, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jesus. We're not showing ourselves to the priest unless we see something here. He, you know, don't you know we can't go show ourselves to the priest unless it's the day of our cleansing? And Jesus would say, I know. <laughs> it's the day of your cleansing. But notice that the reality, what is it that gives substance to the things we hope for? What for these lepers was going to give substance to the thing they hoped for? Now it's Jesus, of course, but they had a part to play to believe. Now Jesus could have said that. You need to put your faith into action. You need to act like what you believe is really true. He didn't say it here. He just said, go show yourselves to the priest. And it says, as they went, they were cleansed. But keep reading, verse 15. One of them, not all, but just one, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, See, he didn't see that he was healed until he turned around to go. And as they went, as they acted on what they believed. And why, why did they believe it? Because they got it from the word of Jesus. When he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, we're not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. He made that little point. And then in verse 19, notice what he said. Arise, go thy way. What are these words? Thy faith hath made thee whole. Have you ever heard those words before? Well, I've heard them twice today already. It's not just an isolated occurrence. He said it to the woman with the issue of blood. He said it to blind Bartimaeus. He said it to this leper. Why does he say your faith has made you whole? Because faith give substance to the things we hope for. Now we know the power has got to come from God. But God isn't holding out on it. God's got the power already available for everybody. 